What's up everyone? I'm gonna go ahead and take you through my favorite way to progressively overload our capsular cars when we're working on our shoulder rotation. Uh, another way you might think about this is a different setup for Cuban rotations, which have been around forever. Um, one of the things about those is normally people will do them sitting on their butt with their hip out to the side and then their elbow on there like this. But with some people being limited in mobility, oftentimes that position for the hip pulls on the spine, which pulls on the scap, which doesn't allow us to get the most out of the shoulder, which is the intent of this exercise anyway. So here's a great alternative that I like to use. Obviously, just like always, we want you to be very proficient and have a lot of control with your actual capsule car unloaded before we even get into this kind of stuff. Um, but this is a great way to progress it. Now, when we're setting up the bar, what I like to see is at about shoulder height so that my elbow sits on it. When it sits on it, I want it to be basically in line with my shoulder. So not too high and not too low. I want to be relatively in line with the shoulder from the side view. Now, I would normally do this actually in the rack, and it's even something that you could um, superset really well with any sort of maybe a back squat, then go into heavier sets of this. Um, but what I'm gonna do is do it over here, so that way the camera can see a little bit easier. Now, starting off with one angle, we're looking at the classic shoulder abduction out to the side, have that locked in. I can also use this marker for a few things. So if I come all the way down and I keep my 90 degree angle at the elbow and the shoulder, I will actually skim this. So if all of a sudden I'm far away from it, I know that I'm actually extending my elbow. So using it as kind of a marker and to see any compensations is something I can definitely do. It's also another marker just for me to be aware of how far I am away from it or how much internal rotation I was actually able to achieve. Now again, we're looking for the X on my bicep to move independent of my shoulder blade. So I wanna take a big deep breath, square myself forward as best as possible. And then even without looking at it, I'm gonna try my best to let the X on my bicep rotate towards the ground, again, independently of my spine or my scapula, still not shrugging. Once I get to my end range, I'm gonna use the back side of my shoulder to drive all the way out of it and rotate back. Now, I could do reps just like I did. So say I did 10 reps of that. Another thing that I often do will focus on the eccentric portion. So if I have someone who's just used a sleeper or they've been working on their shoulder IR, having them do 10 second eccentrics where they slowly own this, resisting the way down under control, and then maybe even use the hand to assist them back into their next rep is a great option. So when we're talking about anybody, we know that we need shoulder rotation. So this is applicable to anybody, but there's another variation that often gets deemed kind of dangerous, but it actually makes a ton of sense, especially for a throwing athlete. As a pitcher, anyone who's throwing, oftentimes you're gonna end up in internal rotation. So the X rotated towards the ground, just like you just saw and it also will end up in shoulder adduction across your body. So think when a pitcher finishes, he's across his body with that arm. So what we can also do is work towards this, but if I have my elbow in front here, now I'm in shoulder adduction instead of abduction, and I'm in that kind of challenging angle to get strong there as well. So by putting that up here, I can do the same thing, square forward, I can even use this for some extra help of radiation lock in nice and tall and then with my scap staying independent i can rotate to the ground come all the way back up same as i think i could totally do it for reps really working on slow control all the way through and then even try to get as much external rotation as possible so as i get into external rotation it should end up being like that so i actually get past my elbow if possible It'd be really hard especially with weight this is a really great way that you can start adding load to some of these movements safely by putting the bar here again my shoulder's not working hard to stay up it's actually resting on there i will have to be light on it because if i'm too heavy on it i'll get stuck and my shoulder won't actually rotate but that feedback and that little bit of help when it's needed can really take this exercise make it a little bit safer allowing you to add more load allowing you to have more mobility gains over a shorter amount of time. So hopefully you guys like that. If you have any questions, please let me know and uh, we'll see you next time.